Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my new shop and welcome back to my little series I'm doing on moving my, uh, my shop from my old shop to this shop. If you missed any of those videos, I will leave you a link to a playlist that contains all the videos that go along with the shop move. Today, I think it's time to fill up this wall and put my hand tool cabinet back. So we're going to head to the old shop, get the cabinet off the wall uh, and with all the tools, hopefully. Bring them back here. I also have a bunch of, or a few new tools I want to put in the cabinet. So I want to make some new, uh, just little holders for them. So we'll uh, get the hand tools in here and do maybe some of the first actual woodworking in the shop. It's going to be very simple, but we'll be cutting wood. So at least we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> so see you at the old shop. So this is my wall hanging tool cabinet with uh, double hinged doors. I guess double bubble doors because the, uh, the doors are double hinged so you have an interior storage area as well as a, I guess a second interior storage area so you get uh, you get to double up the vertical surfaces here and give you some more places to hang stuff. So I have mine situated so I have my most commonly used tools on the inside and then the inside area here are my little, you know less commonly used tools. So this is uh, what we're going to be moving today. I do have a quick summary video of the build on the channel. I will leave you a link to that if you want to check it out. This is one of my classes over in the guild. This is uh, what 18 instructional videos on building this project going through the entire design and all the joinery and everything in here. This is primarily a mitered through dovetail construction. The case and the doors are all mitered through dovetails. Uh, we have some crenellated tenons here in this divider thing here. We got uh, hand cut dovetail drawers here, so half blind and through dovetails there. So if you want a more in-depth dive into woodworking, definitely check out my classes. The, uh, there's a lot of information there. So even if you're not going to build the actual project, you're going to learn quite a bit about uh, woodworking and stuff. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I'm going to get my little table here set up. This is the table I brought. There we go, scrap piece of metal in here, and some forks, and we're gonna start pulling everything out of here and uh, oh, getting it in the truck. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a uh, good place to start. I have my drawers, which I can pull out and just you know take right to the truck, but I can also just toss whatever is in the cubbies above here into here, and this becomes a nice little carrying thing. That guy. And this can go into the truck in a second. Furniture. <laughs> I actually found that uh, old end mills from the bridge port make a really nice burnishing tool because it's a nice piece of uh, high speed steel. It does a nice job of burnishing the car scrapers. So I've been using those, which has been a nice. Oh, I gotta make an actual handle for it because this is not super. Oh, it's not too bad, but luckily it's dull. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't be that comfortable to be touching on it. Okay. This should be pretty easy to take just like this. Oh, that's convenient. That's my skew block rabbit plane that uh, Ben Crow gave me over at Crimson Guitars when I was over there gosh, almost two years ago already. That went fast. Small stuff. So what I'm thinking I can do for the hand planes to make moving them a little bit easier is I can pull them out of here and take the tills out since they do come out and just use the tills as little trays to put them in the truck. That might, uh, that might work. I don't really know, but it seems like a good way to go about it. My little mallets here. Okay, let's see about, yeah, this, this should maybe work. <laughs> we'll see. Probably gonna be a little heavy, but at least it'll be more convenient than moving a bunch of planes individually. So then this tray just is doweled into the shelf here. There's a couple of dowels that just keep it from sliding. This whole thing comes out. Yeah, this might work. There. 
Now I can just take this out to the truck. If I can get my hands on it. <laughs> yeah, this will work. I'll be able to do exactly the same thing with the long till. There. There we go. Another plane carrier. Boop. To the truck. Now for the saws, let's see here. That was easy. <laughs> Put those in the bucket. This is going pretty quickly. I was not expecting it to go this fast. Okay, marking gauges. Okay, let's probably go right in this box. All these guys. That pretty well clears out most of everything in this front kind of area. I'm thinking what I can do, I'm gonna try at least, is since the chisels, their holders pretty much immobilize them, so the only way for them to come out is for them to go up. I might just try and take both these doors off in one piece and leave these in here for transport. I'm not, I'll try that last. <laughs> let's, uh, let's empty out this side first. Draw a knife, it's easy. This is going surprisingly well. Uh, so I think I'm gonna do the chisels next. So since I have the skid steer here, I can bring it in here and support this as I drop the, uh, the hinges out. I've already gone through, as you can see, and it's replaced. Uh, well, I started to go through and replace the slide screws with um, whatever Phillips head screws so I can drop them off with the, uh, with the drill a little bit easier and quicker because you don't really want to be trying to pull a door up and trying to guide a slide screw. Throw another screw up there, then we'll get the skid steer in position and drop this pair of doors off of here. And don't let me forget that I have two planes up here. <laughs> With my luck, I'll forget and then try and pull this cabin off the wall and get clonked in the head. Because that was so effective, I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. I know someone's going to comment about how I could have used lift-off hinges for this. I just don't really like the look of lift-off hinges. Very nice. Easy. I like that. Uh, so let me get these down before I completely forget about them. This is my number eight, the corrugated sole. Nice one. I want to get this lighting on hooked, and then I think it'd be good to start dropping this main case off the wall. All right, now we can start working on the, getting this thing down. So how this is up here, there is a lower section. You can see the divider right here. This is the cleat that mounts to the wall, and then there are two bolts up here which allow me to adjust the plum, plumness of the, uh, of the case so that the doors will stay closed you know, by themselves. So I have uh, the one bolt for plumbing behind the, uh, the tall plane till, and then the other plumbing bolt is right here behind the, uh, the mount for the saw till. So those two bolts come out first, and then this whole case will lift off the wall, off that lower cleat. At least that's the theory.
Oh, yeah. No problem. There. And then this is the mounting cleat, which actually supports the weight of the cabinet. Okay, entire handhold cabinet is in the truck. <laughs> this is the last thing. And there we go. Mounting plate. It's off the wall. Cool. So now it's uh, just a matter of heading home and, you know, doing the opposite of what I just did. <laughs> oh boy, hopefully that goes as smoothly as this did. Well, good morning. The tool cabinet did make it here just fine. No uh, crazy issues in transport. And I did to get started this morning getting the cleat hung up onto the wall. I decided to just reuse the screw holes on this side. Since now I have studs, not a block wall, I have to kind of just line up with the studs. So I'm using these holes that are here ready, and I'm putting some new holes down here to line up with the next stud in line. The second set of screw holes here is still going to put this uh, screw head in an area that will be covered by actually the plane till now instead of the saw till. So I'm not going to have the exposed hardware inside the cabinet. So I have one more uh, lag to put here into the cleat and then we can throw the cabinet up onto the wall. So uh, second try on hitting that stud. Always uh, fun, but hey, never going to see that once the uh, stuff's all in here. So I think next what I'll do is get the doors mounted, make sure the cabinet is sitting plumb a little bit back so that way it, uh, the doors close by themselves and they stay open by themselves as well. So yeah, this should be interesting. Get these things back hung up on the, uh, the hinges and then take a final look before loading it up. And I will of course make sure that I uh, leave all these screw heads at a random clocking because I know that uh, <laughs> that bothers some of you. Okay, let's check the, uh, the swing here the plumbness, I guess, of the cabinet. So if I bring the doors to the front, do they want to close by themselves? If I close it all the way and let go, you can see this one comes away. I guess things probably the same for this one. A little bit. So I need to move the top of the cabinet back towards the wall, so I just tighten up this uh, screw here. That's pretty good, or at least good enough. So let's, uh, let's fill this thing up with tools. That should go pretty quickly and somewhat smoothly, I hope. So here are the tools that I need to make holders for and get them into the case. So this is a marking gauge that I, uh, I bought last fall. A little bit of a splurge. This is from uh, Mass Woodworks. It is a brass and zero cote marking gauge. It's actually a, uh, technically a cutting gauge because it has a knife in it. Uh, huge, beefy, and uh, ridiculous. This was a, <laughs> a fun purchase. Uh, the other thing here I have are a set of rafts. Uh, these were sent out from Leo J. They sent me a few of them. Man, I think it was like last year sometime uh, to try out. Most of the things I do are kind of smaller as far as rasps go. So the smaller rasps here I have used. I have not used the bigger ones, especially this uh, cheese grater <laughs> type of rasp. <laughs> so there still is room here in my marking gauge area for another one. So this is probably going to go in here like this and very simple holder. Basically, I'm just going to make one of these, but have it just be one slot. So you know, like a little fork holder is all it's going to be. 
just like those. So when I made this rasp and file holder, I did kind of plan for the future. I figured I'd probably have, you know, one more to put in there so I can cut some slots if I need to. So I think all I'm gonna do here is just make another one of these things for the four new ones with, you know, one small issue is that this giant one is a little too wide to go in here. So we're gonna see if it's gonna look goofy, but I'm gonna mount them at a little bit of an angle. I don't think it's gonna be, it's more a visual thing than anything. It's functionally, it's not like they're gonna go anywhere because they have teeth. So yeah, we'll just go with that. So I'm just gonna make another one of these and uh, a fork holder and get them in here. We'll do a little bit of, uh, of woodworking. <laughs> I have a piece of birch, which is what all the other holders are made out of. So I'm just gonna chop off a piece and then mill it up into some stock. And this is just gonna be a, uh, a table saw type of project. I guess the only thing of interest on this is that the slots for the rasp holders are at a little bit of an angle so that they are tilted back into the holder a little bit so they don't have a tendency to you know, slide out forward. That's really about it. <laughs> it's a very simple amount of woodworking here. So moving this cabinet and everything inside of it was one of the things that I was dreading the most about the shop move, but actually it ended up being a very quick and almost completely painless experience, which uh, during a moving process is kind of a nice relief, like, like big time. So with this in here, it really brings the shop back to kind of feeling like a shop and it gets the space looking like the old shop. So it's got a nice homely feel. Uh, that's for that's for sure. And again, if you're interested in the ins and outs of designing and building your dream hand tool cabinet, I will leave you a link to my class down in the description. You can also check out a summary of the entire build here on the channel. So that's going to do it for this part of the shop move and setup. Next time we're going to get into uh, the dust collection, which uh, should be fun. Maybe it'd be awesome. One more thing to check off the list before getting back to like a completely set up shop. So look for that uh, in the future. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the shop move or anything here in the new shop, please feel free to leave me a comment as always I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.